Hey everybody and welcome to the Grand Garden Tour of 2021. I'm going to show you around the front yard up close and personal. But here I wanted to show you the angle from me standing on the other side of the street. A couple of you had asked if you could see everything all together. Um, so it's kind of like you're, you're standing here with me and that way you can kind of get an idea of how the landscape looks and where I have the roses placed. So obviously you see our driveway. Hey kitty, I've got Peaches here with me. He's joining me today. Hi baby. Whenever I do my garden tours, they always like want to join and hang around. So um, they like to follow me around. Um, but here you can see I've got a front uh, rose bed right here next to the mailbox. This is just completely covered in blooms right now. It's amazing. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so you can see better. Look at all this color. Isn't it beautiful? Today is May 2nd, by the way. So those of you who live in the south, I'm sure a lot of your roses are blooming right now. Up north, you gotta wait a little bit longer, I'm sure. Hi, I know, I know you're there. Hi, do you need me to acknowledge you? Yes, hi, I know you're there. Uh, yes, I know. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here's my, one of my favorite spots of the garden is, and this is the spot that gets full sun. And um, I have most, well, not really most of my roses because I have a ton of roses in the back too. But this is my full sun bed. Everything else gets kind of like partial sun. And let's see here. I think this rose is Wollerton Old Hall. It has a beautiful form. And it's just a bit of a lighter um, color than the Jude rose right here. This is Jude, the obscure. And I have them kind of planted next to each other here. There's two Wollerton Old Halls and then one Jude behind them. So I think I planted like two Wollertons here and then the Jude behind that. And then as you can see, I've got Clematis intertwined in here. Here's more of Jude coming through. This one is called First Crush. It's a cordis rose. It's one of my favorites. It's really beautiful. It has a really beautiful shape to it once it opens up. This is kind of like the bud, you know, just beginning to open bud stage and then this is fully open stage. The stage in between is just perfection. It's beautiful. This is one of my favorites. It's called Alchemist. Stunning colors. My absolute favorite colors in a rose. I call them sunset colors because that's what they remind me of. And excuse me if I get a little nasally or sniffly or I sneeze right now. Um, all of our trees have leafed out except actually the hickories are the ones that are leafing out right now. They're the latest to come out and me and hickory pollen do not mix. So I'm like, my allergies are a bit crazy right now. So I might be sniffling a bit, but this is, you know, this is another cane of alchemist. Look how beautiful it is. This is one of my favorites. It's just covered in roses right now. An alchemist will only bloom once. It's a one-time bloomer, but that's okay. It's totally worth it to me because I love it that much. And this here is actually, um, people say it's a weed. I believe that it's actually like a, to me it looks like it's a wild geranium, but I love it. So I let it grow in there and let it just fill in the empty spaces because I enjoy it. I think it's really pretty. And then we have salvia and catmint. Look at that. I just, Alchemist just is so beautiful. 
And then right here we have Generous Gardener. And she's all up in here. All these buds are Generous Gardener. And then here I have Caramella. Yes, baby. And then this is Beverly. Really pretty pink. This one stayed on the smaller side for some reason. More Caramella. And the big showstopper here is Summer Romance, this pink rose that has just kind of gone all over the place. You can't even see the obelisk anymore. There's an obelisk under there, but you can't see it. And that's okay, I, I like that. I'd rather see roses. But this is one of my most prolific, most bountiful roses in my garden. And that's why I ended up getting, I have about six shrubs, six more shrubs in the back because it, it does this everywhere. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And so what I've got here is I have this part, which I've cut back and maintained it to stay lower. And then this, I let a couple of canes go up into the obelisk and look at it. It's just beautiful. So this is full bloom moment right here. And look how pretty that is. Absolutely beautiful. And then I've got clematis growing in here as well. And then here mixed in is Earth Angel, which is just starting to open up. And then this one here is Cinderella Fairy Tale, which is also a little late to open up. This one always kind of opens up a little bit later. And the buds look a little bit different right now. They, don't, they normally look better than that. But if we get, you know, pummeled with rain, it really does not like it at all. And I think tomorrow we're supposed to, oops, sorry for the fuzziness. Um, and tomorrow we're supposed to get rain on Monday and Tuesday, unfortunately. So I'm not really sure how these blooms will end up doing. So that's why I was like, I need to get this tour in because tomorrow things may look a lot different after the rain. And I might be cutting a lot of these roses to bring inside to enjoy inside the house, which I've already got, I feel like a ton out there. Look how beautiful this rose is. This is Savannah by Cordis. It has the most beautiful shape and really, really vibrant color for a, a lighter pink rose, that is. And this one is covered in blooms right now. Isn't that interesting how it fades out like that? Here's another one with a little bit of a different form. It smells really good very very pretty um, this is another summer romance if you look at my previous videos I used to have Evelyn here they never really did very well because they uh, the roots had been eaten by voles and I was trying to recuperate them and it just never really worked out so I ended up giving some to friends to see if they would do better for them and then I kept one and I put it in a pot back out by the pool so this one's already doing great it was in a container and this rose gets really huge so it really does better in the ground so i'm hoping that this will turn into that eventually right here and just be covered in blooms as well this one is poseidon either poseidon or plum perfect i'm not sure which I have them next to each other. Once they bloom, then I know which ones they are. Yeah, I think that one might be Plum Perfect. It's a purple one. Um, but yeah, so they still have yet to bloom. But this is one of my favorite spots. And then, oh, over here, I've got Munstead Wood. Still looking really pretty. I did take a video of this one earlier, but I don't think I uploaded it. 
because my battery, or it's not my battery, but my storage on my phone has run out. So my videos have had to be a lot shorter because of that. I'm working on trying to fix that issue. Isn't that pretty? Really deep, intense red rose. Yes, baby. And then I don't know if y'all remember in my previous videos, I had three Queen of Sweden's right here. Unfortunately, voles got to those as well. They completely ate all the roots and I had to pull them out and they didn't survive. So I ended up putting a butterfly bush here instead. I thought that the uh, purplish blue flowers would look really nice with the red roses. So just waiting on for that to get big for now. We got some daylilies here and some, um, I think those are trumpet lilies back there. And then those are some old daffodils that aren't blooming anymore. We got lamb's ear here and more daylilies. And here's my beautiful Emperor One Japanese maple. Which is getting so big. Oh, and then I do have a ginkgo tree right there as well. And then look at this. These roses are starting to open up. I've got Ispahan. And then this one right here, which is not doing so great. This one I think is called Souvenir de Louise de Amad or something like that. It's some crazy French name that I'm probably pronouncing wrong. Here's another peony that's about to open up. This is called Etched Salmon. And then I have some more lilies back there. And more daylilies. And gardenias. Those are jubilation gardenias, I believe. And they're not doing very well, but I'm throwing some maxi on them, hoping they, they recover. Here's the pretty front porch. Still looking good. I feel like I keep adding more and more pots. It, like, just doesn't end. Here's the front border with snapdragons and pansies and violas. And then here's my beautiful Eden Rose. Really starting to come out. This year we ended up trellising it and we didn't let it just fall over. Which it looks nice like this, but I feel like last year when we had it fall over, um, you could see the roses up close more. And it was just a prettier effect. But it was like, you know, smushing all the plants underneath it. So, but this is still really beautiful. I just can't get very close because this border is pretty wide. Oh, hi, Bee. Lots of roses. I've got double knockout roses. There we go. I can get a close up of that. Isn't she beautiful? There's still more to come out. It's just taking a little bit of time. And then this rose right here is Souvenir de la Malmaison. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. Very, very pretty, delicate rose. Now let's go back here. You can see how the side yard is doing. I 
everything we planted about, I'd say a month ago, is doing very well. A lot of it is still pretty tiny, but it'll grow. It just takes time. That one azalea did not make it for some reason. And that's too late to replace it now because they don't have those azaleas in stock anymore, sadly. But all the hostas are coming up. See the bare root hostas that I planted? They're all coming up nicely. These were uh, bare root from Gilbert H. Wild. And there were like about five, I said about five or six different varieties are in the 100 pack that I got gotten. Um, and they weren't labeled, so I don't know what they are, but they are different varieties, which is nice. These are azaleas here. And I've got Daphne and heucheras and foxgloves. I'm so excited. The foxgloves are blooming. The stalks are starting to come up. I didn't know if they were going to bloom this year or not. Hey, baby. Do you like hiding in there? And don't worry, my cats don't eat my plants, so we're all right. Look how pretty that is. I love the dainty flowers on these heucheras. These are called Georgia peach, so perfect for where I live because I'm in Georgia. Everything is doing very well. Looking good here. Hey, kitty. Kitty. Hey, baby. Hey, what's she looking for? Huh? Hi. Hi, baby. Okay, sorry. We need to focus. Kitties can be a distraction. Um, here is Lady of the Lake, which is a rambling rose by David Austin and most of her is on the other side so let's go in here and I can show you the rest this gets part sun so as you can see it's not super covered in blooms but it's enough to get enjoyment out of it And there's some weeds in here. This part is not, well, this is doing pretty good. It's gotten pretty big. These are my um, Annabelle hydrangeas mixed in with some autumn ferns, which the autumn ferns always do great. We still need to mulch this pathway. But this is our new little archway trellis here that I've got um, like Chinese noodle beans growing. They're just little seedlings right now. I planted them about a week and a half ago. Um, I've got melon seeds on there, so we can grow, there's like small French melons that can grow up over it. And I think I have one called a Kajari melon. All sorts of different stuff that's gonna grow up over there. But here's one of the peonies that's just starting to open. Isn't that pretty? I've got tons of peonies. Oh, and here's a pretty iris too. I don't remember the name of it though. I mean, maybe it's like pink princess or something like that, but I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but here's the big wall of roses here. Isn't that beautiful? I'll show you a close up too, but the um, up top here on the pergola, the Felicity Rose is just starting to open up and it's so pretty. I mean, it has like, thousands of blooms all over it and I'm so excited to see it bloom because there were none last year because it had I planted it two years ago so last year it was mainly concentrating on growing canes and this year is really the first year that it's going to have these beautiful blooms all over it so I'm really excited about that and I'll probably end up showing you a video from our bedroom window because we have a really nice view um, from overhead 
um, up in our bedroom. So I'll probably post a video once those are in full bloom. But here I've got a nice little strawberry bed coming along. And then he, all along here I've got raspberries. Just waiting for them to, to really take off. They are staying nice and green, but they are not, they haven't been growing more. I hope they're getting enough sun. They get a lot of sun in like the afternoon, so hopefully they'll do well. And the uh, blueberries over here are doing great. There's lots and lots of blueberries here. here and I'll show you a close-up of the roses. There's a whole bunch of peonies all in here. Sorry if I'm shaky with the camera. Excuse me. Sorry about that. But look at this gorgeous section right here. I love that when you walk up the stairs this is what you see. Absolutely stunning. And look at Madame Anisette all opened up. Isn't that beautiful? A very, very romantic rose. And what I ended up doing, because the canes were so long, they were sticking out this way. I pulled them back and wrapped them around the pergola and attached them. So that's how I got this effect of like a wall of roses right here. I really need to like get a different camera. I have such trouble focusing on these roses. And then see it kind of came through here. And look at this dainty clematis. Isn't that just the most cutest little thing ever? I believe it's called Betty Corning. Something like that. That's another clematis I got from Brushwood Nursery. Isn't that so sweet? And I planted this last year. Here is Crown Princess, Crown Princess Margarita, or Margareta, however you say it. Doing beautifully. Here's Felicity about to open up. And then look at this view. Isn't that beautiful? I just sit, stand here and look at that and be like, wow, I can't believe we actually did this. We created this. It's a pretty amazing feeling to just sit here and be able and be able to enjoy all of our hard work. We've got we've got an Alexa out here because we were in the pool earlier and listening to music while we were playing in the pool. It's a good family family Sunday in the pool. This is uh, Gertrude Jekyll. One of my favorites. Has a beautiful scent. And she's just blooming all over the place right now. I'm hoping. Oh, yep, I see them. The canes, basal canes are starting to break and come up. This is great. Awesome. I was hoping that would happen. I had um, made this go lateral later on in the season. 
and I was hoping that we get some growth, you know, some more growth going upward off the canes, and that's exactly what's happening, so that's good. Glad to see that's going on. Oh yeah, yep, see? Here we go. There's one, perfect. And there's another one, oh great. And then I love all my geraniums here on the wall. To me, it feels like something you would experience in Europe, which I love everything about Europe. I'm just so excited to go back one day once all this COVID nonsense settles down and get back to traveling. I miss it so, so much. But for now, we were like, hey, let's just create it in our own backyard. So that's what we did. And this, um, this pot is actually from England that I bought at a local nursery here. Surprisingly, they had some in stock, which was I thought was amazing. That's highly unusual for this area. Here's some pretty annuals. We've got verbena in here, calabrocoa, and supertunias, which I believe this one is called Bordeaux, which is a proven winner's supertunia. Excuse that, that's uh, something my husband put out. <laughs> Not the prettiest thing to see right now. And there's some annuals in the pots here. But this is one of my favorite roses right here. This is Zade. So, so pretty. really pretty right now. And Arabella is still looking nice. Here's Super Tunia Bubblegum, totally exploded with flowers, as it always does for me. And then look at Evelyn. Isn't she beautiful? This is the one Evelyn rose that I kept because it was the, the happiest out of all of them. It was the strongest one. Absolutely gorgeous. More buds are about to open too. Citrus trees are doing well. And the hydrangeas over there are doing well too. Everything's filled in nicely. Getting ready for summer. As you can see up top, there's some blooms. Super excited about that. But this is definitely our little paradise back here. And we did the landscaping all by ourselves. These are all of my limelight hydrangeas. And then I've got peonies mixed in here with daisy gardenias. And when the daisy gardenias bloom, you can smell them by the pool and it's just such a heavenly scent. All you wanna do is be out here. Look at that. Oh my gosh, isn't that so pretty? This is a bowl of cream peony. Oh my gosh, it's huge too. Look at that. Amazing. All right. 
right, let's come down this way. Sorry, it's a little bumpy, y'all. Here's quietness all opened up. also have Lady of Shalott right here. Lots and lots of blooms. And back here is my vegetable garden, which I have a ton of flowers in as well. It's actually a small vegetable garden compared to the amount of flowers that are back here. Right now, I've got beans coming up in here, like Blue Lake, Bush Beans, and then some Thai Soldier beans as well. And then I also have some cucumber seedlings, and I believe those are called something Jade cucumbers. The garlic and the onions are still doing great. They're starting to yellow out a little bit, which means it's almost time to pull them up. I'm trying to be very patient with them because I'm like ready to plant other stuff. But honestly, we've been so busy around here. It's kind of nice to have the break. So, um, but here I've got this beautiful clematis. Look at this. This is a showstopper. And I keep forgetting the name of it. I know that it is named after a Japanese opera singer. And we got it at Brushwood. So Google it, guys, because I cannot think of it. <laughs> but it is gorgeous. And I've got it with this rose as well. Which this rose is called Lady Ash. Amazing. Um, in this bed here, I planted a whole bunch of flower seeds and sunflowers and cosmos and zinnias. Um, I really need to get a sign in front of this thing that says like sunflower house or something because I, I wanted to create it where you walk in and you're just surrounded by flowers and you feel like you're in a sunflower house. And I just haven't gotten the, gotten the sign yet. I'll eventually get it. <laughs> um, and then look, I've also got here, this is called speckled swan gourd. I planted a couple of seeds on each side for them to grow up over the arbor. So I'm really excited to see how those do. And then over here, I've got roses, roses, roses and daisies. I got Shasta daisies and more clematis and uh, this rose is called Queen of Denmark. It's doing very, very well. It kind of just arches all over the place. All the roses in the back, I just kind of let them go and do their thing. Um, I keep the ones up front more pruned on a regular basis. And this one here is, this is Earth Angel, I think, yeah. The blooms are starting to look a little bit different now. Not so cupped anymore. But totally covered. Every arched cane is just covered in roses. And this, I've just realized that here in the south, most roses do better with this method because the, the roses, they want to grow nonstop, always. So I just let them go. I let them grow and then I'll peg the canes or I'll prop the canes up on a structure or something. That way they can just be happy that way because if you keep, cut, keep cutting them back, they just don't like it very much. 
This is Princess Alexandra of Kent. Let's see if I can focus on it here. Isn't that beautiful? And I just wanna encourage those of you who haven't started gardening yet, don't be nervous or afraid that you're gonna do something wrong or you have to do things a certain way or just get started. And like, cause I learned as I went. Um, when I first started out, I went to the library and I got as many books as I possibly could. But, and I, I encourage you to do that. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing, but you really learn by doing, to be honest, because everyone's location and climate are so different. And it will just, a lot of things will depend on that. It depends on what kind of climate you have, what are your growing conditions are. And I mean, even different houses can make a big difference too. Look at that, isn't that fantastic color? Oh, that's a Renarung on Broad, by the way. Um, and then look at Zade up there, looking fabulous. The lighting right now is a little bit difficult to see, see her. And then here's Climbing Pinky as well. But like for instance, so let me get back to the growing thing. Um, at our old house, we had very different soil from this house. Um, we moved from Ackworth, which is about an hour away from here, a little over an hour. And the soil over there is completely different to where we are here. Here, we actually live near a rock quarry. And so this land is just completely filled with rocks, rocks everywhere. Um, so it's very hard to plant in the soil because it is so rocky. So we have to bring in good landscaping soil and raise the beds up in order to get things to grow really nicely. Um, in the tree line, it's a little bit different. There's still some rocks in there, but because in this tree line, you know, there's been years and years of leaves falling and decomposing and creating this gorgeous, rich dirt soil, sorry. <laughs> um, so out there, it's a little bit easier to plant in because the soil is really, really rich and beautiful. But, um, you know, around the house area where, you know, they had to scrape up the earth and move all the trees and things like that. They took off that layer of good soil when building the house. And we were just left with this like red clay, you know, so we had to put down this, you know, a nice layer of good dirt in order to grow these kind of things. That's why a lot of this, these beds have a good layer of landscape soil in them. I would say about halfway mark here is um, red clay because they had to fill it up and pack it down and make sure it stays all sturdy and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, for the most part, the top layer is really good soil. And I think that is probably the number one advice or my number one point I could give you with roses. Well, actually three points. Give them good soil, lots and lots of water, and lots and lots of food. Those are the three main things you need to be concerned about. I would not worry about buying all the insecticides and fungicides and miticides and blah, 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 blah. If you take care of your roses, feed them well, they usually will repel all those pests themselves naturally. Some roses are bred that way, but not all of them. A lot of the older roses are a little bit more susceptible. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you buy disease resistant roses, then you're gonna have better results most likely. Look at that pompanella, so pretty. Pompanella is really starting to come out. And me personally, I find that Cordis roses for my area are a lot more disease resistant than David Austin roses. There are some David Austin roses that are more disease resistant than others. So I tend to like to grow those. Oh, by the way, this is uh, Bartzella. 
Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Such a pretty peony. So anyway, I stick with those roses that are more disease resistant, which like these are. These are David Austin and though these are the most disease resistant, like um, Generous Gardener, Teasing Georgia. Those do really great for my area. Look at these awesome, look at this, oh my gosh. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. Oh, and then back here is Colette. And this one's teasing Georgia. And then this one right here is Generous Gardener. Oh, hi, baby. What you doing? Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. Are you going to follow me? Here's uh, Colette again. We can get a little bit closer. And then what I did here, I alternated Summer Romance and Madame Anisette. So, like, let's see here. Oops, hold on, I'm gonna come through my blueberry bush here. So this one right here is Madame Anisette. Uh, you see Colette's kind of growing through it. And then this one's Summer Romance, Madame Anisette, Summer Romance, Madame Anisette, and then Summer Romance. And so they all just kind of like, intertwine together to create this really pretty look and I say if you've got the space to just let them go and do their thing then do it you'll get so many more blooms that way but it does require a lot of space oh, so here's summer romance This one just blooms the most out of all the roses in my garden. I don't know what it is. I guess it's just a really, really good rose, but I love it. And then I've got Jasmine up there as well that has buds all over it. They're about to open. I'm super excited about that. Sorry. There's another pretty Madame that I set right there. I can show you how the woodland garden area is doing. Oops, hold on, I got mulch in my shoes. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I didn't show you my, got some tomatoes and peppers here. They're doing great. I'm gonna put some cages in pretty soon. Got some tomatoes and leeks, and then a whole bed of tomatoes there. And 
And then I've got some citrus trees, or excuse me, not citrus trees, fruit trees um, along the pathway here. Oh man, what is going on with this? He does not look very happy. Hmm. I wonder why that's wilting. But here's my little fairy garden area that I created. Everything's looking really great. Now here's the fern dell. I'm going to do expanded mode on this. There we go. So everything's so different when the leaves are out. The hemlock tree is looking beautiful. It's got some new growth on it. Wow, the foxgloves have really beefed up. Look at that. I'm so excited, the flower stalks are starting to come up. That's exciting. There are a few weeds in here that I need to come in and remove. But it's looking great. Yeah, the pathway needs to be weeded for sure. And then I put all the hostas back in there. I'll try to get a closer video of that. Here's my little fairy girl. I used to have her on the front porch. I thought she needed to be back here in the fairy garden. But I've got hostas and heucheras and some oxalis and really neat ferns. And here's my little bench. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that I need to weed. And these are some more hostas that I got in bulk and bare root. See, so here's a different, different looking one. That's a pretty one. I like that variegation. Weeping willows coming out nicely. I've got some host more hostas I need to plant in here. I just haven't gotten to it yet. And then there's a lot of hostas back in here popping up. Along with some weeds too. <laughs> so we'll have to take care of those. A lot of tree baby trees from all the nuts and acorns that have fallen last fall. At this stage, it's kind of hard to tell what's a hosta and what's a weed on video, but next year you'll be able to see it a lot better. How pretty is that? And here's some more that I planted in here. Oops, how did that happen? It's weird. Hmm. Then we have some pretty Japanese maples. That's a full moon maple. I think it's called Moonrise. And then I think this is Moonrise as well. I might, I might have planted two Moonrises together. I can't remember if I did or not. The leaf shape looks a little bit different though. I don't know. I haven't done well in keeping track of that stuff. And then here's another spot that's the weeds are starting to take over. A lot of vines. We have a lot of muscadine vine that we have to keep track of. Uh, this Japanese maple is called Fire Glow. And there's a black tulip magnolia, which 
bloomed beautifully this year. Can't I think that's uh one of the ghost series Japanese maples, but I I can't remember which one. It might be autumn ghost or I'm not sure, but look at that leaf. Isn't that awesome? Super cool. And then this one is called Dancing Peacock. And then this is my Elizabeth Magnolia, which I bought for my daughter, because her name is Elizabeth. And then this one, this um, Japanese maple is called Peaches and Cream. And here's our little fire pit area, which I really need to put something here along the fence. Um, I was thinking about doing a small shrub, maybe like one of the small um, hydrangea paniculatas, the ones that stay really small, like three feet by three feet. I'm not sure what the names are. I know they exist. I think it may be like little lime or something like that. A little lime hydrangea or something similar to that. I may end up planting a hedge there. So there's that. Now I just need to show you the cottage garden area in the front and then I think that's gonna be the full the full tour. Lots of citrus trees. Here are those hostas I need to plant in the back. I also have more dahlias I need to plant too. Always something, right? All right, here's the cottage garden area. I'm gonna show you Olivia Rose Austin one more time. I did do a separate video on her, but she still looks really great. Isn't that beautiful? And again, in the south, because I'd read a comment, someone had mentioned, is that a climbing rose? Because the canes are so long. Um, here in the south, the roses love to grow, 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 and it's very hard to keep roses in a shrub formation. They will get super, super tall. And in order to get the most blooms, I just end up letting them either gracefully arch over or I will peg them down. Look at these cats. What are y'all doing? Silly boys. Um, that way I can get the most blooms out of it. I just hate cutting back all this new growth that they put off. And I know in different climates, especially in England, that's a very unusual thing. Roses tend to stay a little bit more shrub-like because of the difference in the climate. It's very, very hot here in the South. So the roses just keep growing nonstop. Um, so it's just a little different for each um, area that we live in, right? But man, that is pretty. I will probably actually cut it back a little bit after it's it's done with its full bloom because that will help rejuvenate it and help it to grow a little bit and bring, um, you know, activate some new growth to happen. Because roses do tend to go dormant in the middle of summer here because it is so hot and they don't, you know, some of them don't like it. So they end up just stopping and then they'll put out another flush um, in late summer, early fall. And here I've got some phlox, lots of mint, and daylilies. And then here is my one of my favorite old roses, Celsiana. The 
this is a really old rose. Um, it dates back, you know, way even before the 1700s, I believe. Maybe even the 1600s. But I know that it was in the rose garden of some very prominent royal families in Europe. Look at all the irises. They're about on their last bloom cycle here. I love the smell of them. We've got some flocks in here. The daffodil blooms are starting to, or the daffodil foliage is starting to, you know, die out. And here we have, a, I think it's a vanilla strawberry. No, this is the phantom hydrangea. That's the vanilla strawberry hydrangea over there. Let's see here. And then that is another Madame Anisette rose right there. And then I got some blueberry bushes right here too. So I think that's just about it. Oh, and this right here, one of my favorite Japanese maples we have is a Crimson Queen. Really pretty structure in there. And it looks really pretty at night with the lights on it. But I think that's it. As far as the tour goes, everyone. I guess I can show you my front porch and then we'll call it a day. How about that? I've got lots of geraniums here. Some of them are from California that are a little bit harder to find locally, the rosebud geraniums. And then I've got, I actually got these from um, a garden friend off of Facebook. Um, his name is Javier. Thank you so much, Javier. I appreciate you sending me your beautiful geraniums. I will take very good care of them. He actually purchased these from a lady in Switzerland. It's called Swanland Pink, and it has the most beautiful pink rosebud geranium. And then this one's called, this one is called Granger's Antique. Um, and I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to get my hands on these and it's been really difficult to do so because apparently right now the borders are shut down in, um, apparently between France and Switzerland. And this lady in Switzerland sends her, has to go to France in order to ship the plants out for some reason, I don't know why. But um, in order for her to go get through the border, she'd have to take a COVID test. And apparently a COVID test in Europe is like 100 euros, which is insane. I mean, that's just crazy. So I completely understand that, you know, she wasn't in a position to travel to, you know, send off all these geraniums to me. So um, I do appreciate Javier sending me um, one of his, though. So I'm really excited to watch this one grow. And um, hopefully, once things get a little bit better globally, then, and when things open back up, um, then I can make that order from Europe because there was like 20 different varieties of geraniums that I want really wanted to try so we'll see hopefully we'll get there but here's kind of like my geranium collection I've got some really neat hostas up in here and dahlias all in pots Here's one of them I got from California. This is the orange rosebud. Isn't that pretty? It's the first bloom I've had on it. These have been growing like crazy and they haven't been blooming. So I've been holding back on the water to get them to bloom. 
more geraniums. We've got hostas. You want to go inside, baby? And then I got some new front porch decor here, which I'm really excited about. I still need to hang the, the sign. I just haven't done it yet. And then I love these geraniums here. These are really vibrant. And then this actually is one of my favorite things. I love this head planter and I don't know if you can tell or not, but the succulents, they are actually fake, which I don't mind at all. That means it's just going to stay that way forever. But to me, I think they look pretty good for being fake. And this one's fake too, actually. So I'm kind of like, you want to mix some fake in with some real people really might not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> these are real down here and I wonder I want to check and see I wonder if the babies are in the nest or if they've left yep looks like they've left baby birds have left the nest it was really fun to watch them grow look at these echeverias so pretty, huh? And the dahlias. And the hostas. I just love mixing all sorts of fun things together. Alright, well I think that's it for today, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this full garden tour and I will continue to load um, new roses up that you know that haven't bloomed yet or um, different things that I know you may want to see so hope you guys are doing well and I will see you in the next video bye everyone